is the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast. One of the most polarizing teams heading into 2023 could very well be the Denver Broncos, who finished 2022 with a 5-12 record and scored only 287 points while surrendering 359. That's a negative 72-point differential. Their passing offense ranked 22nd, uh, getting about 202.6 yards per game. Their run offense was 5th, averaging 146.5 yards per game. Meanwhile, their passing defense was the 5th best in the league, surrendering just 196.2, while their run defense was 25th, allowing 135 yards per contest. Only the Texans and the Colts had a worse points differential than the Broncos did in 2022, and no team, no team scored four, fewer points than the Broncos did. Nothing went right or looked right in Broncos country last season. Let's call it the way it is. Tyreek Wolm was even out there body shaming Russell Wilson, saying that he looked like a sack of potatoes. Tim Patrick, he got hurt before the season even started. Javante Williams suffered a nasty knee injury. The Broncos offensive line surrendered a league-high 63 sacks, some of those falling directly onto Russell Wilson's shoulders for holding onto the ball too long. Even big-ticket free agent signing Randy Gregory was a bust, limited to just six contests, picking up just a pair of sacks. Changes needed to occur, and they did, and more on that in a second. But first, let's turn our attention to OTAs. And two things that I'm going to be watching for throughout the camp, throughout the offseason here, is Javante Williams' touches versus Samaje Pirine's. We know that Pirine has the ability to be a lead back. We saw him go to work there in Cincinnati when Joe Mixon got hurt. We also know that Javante Williams may or may not be ready come week number one. It depends if you are in that corner that believes in Sean Payton. I'm not. I think he's a liar. And I think that Williams is going to be out a little bit longer than expected, which is why the rumors of the Broncos being attached to Delvin Cook could be quite telling. Also, how are targets going to be distributed here in Denver? We know that Judy and Sutton each had over 100 targets. Most of Sutton's coming when Judy wasn't available. But after that, there was a huge drop-off when Greg Dolchitz was next in line with 55 targets and Kendall Hinton was fourth with 33. Jerry, Judy, and Cortland Sutton, they're still there. We also know that the Broncos traded for Adam Troutman. We also know that KJ Hamler and Tim Patrick are going to be healthy. And we know that Marvin Mims was drafted to add some explosiveness to this Sean Payton offense. Now let's talk about some of these other additions here. Let's talk about the draft. Let's talk about offseason trades and all this other fun stuff. In the draft class, the Broncos tra- drafted Marvin Mims in the second round, pick number 63. They followed it up in the third round with pick number 67 and linebacker Drew Sanders. In the third round, they went cornerback with pick number 83 and Riley Moss. And in round number six, pick 183, they went with safety J.L. Skinner. Now, I'll talk about those offseason additions and attractions through free agency. Sean Payton obviously is a big one, right? We've got the first one we got to talk about there. Then they looked at the offensive line with Ben Powers at guard and offensive tackle there, Mike McGlinchey. Defensive line, Zach Allen. Running back, Samaj P. Ryan. And defensive end, Frank Clark. As for the losses, defensive tackle, Draymond Jones. Guard, Graham Glasgow. And cornerback, Ronald Darby. So what was the best move that the Broncos made this offseason? I'm going to say it was additions to that offensive line that included both Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey via free agency. We already talked about the league high 63 sacks in which the Broncos allowed last season. That's a category you do not want to lead the league in. We saw what Peyton did when he joined the Saints, a Saints team that had an undersized quarterback there. He built a line in front of him in which the Drew Brees could stand in the pocket and make plays and not worrying about when he's going to get hit next. Now, Denver, they probably overpaid when it came to Mike McGlinchey there, who signed a five-year, $87 million contract after allowing six sacks and taking 10 penalties last season. But he was still an upgrade on what the Broncos had last season. Now, the worst move, when you overpay for protection for your quarterback, then you don't necessarily have the funds to address other concerns. Maybe even take care of your own in-house item. In this case, it came at the expense of Draymond Jones, who led the Broncos with six and a half sacks last season and added 47 tackles. Denver will be hoping that Drew Sanders and newly signed Frank Clark can pick up some of that production. Maybe even Randall Gregory can come in and do what he got paid for. So what needs to happen for the Broncos in 2023? Well, first off, Denver's schedule, it doesn't do them any favors. When you face the Chiefs twice, the Chargers twice, then you face the Jets, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Browns, and the Lions, it's going to be a tough road to the playoffs. That's not even to mention they have to face off against the Raiders, their AFC West divisional rival. Those games are never easy no matter where these teams stand when it comes in the standings. Russell Wilson, he needs to shut up. I mean, I'll call it the way it is. He just needs to shut up and play ball. 
No more feeling dangerous. No more danger sandwiches. No more Broncos country. Let's ride. And stop this leaner and meaner. Like, Wilson just can't keep his mouth shut. He has to say something stupid all the time. That's probably just who he is. But it's got to stop. Wilson needs to fix he has to fix, and maybe that's, that's Sean Payton's job here, fix whatever caused him to have a career-worst passer rating. If they can improve on this just even a little bit, then you have to believe that they're going to be able to score more than the 16.9 points per game they averaged last season, which, again, was a league low. Payton was brought in here to fix this offense, fix their offensive woes here. The talent, it's in place. There's plenty of talent here in Broncos country. In fact, the Broncos may have one of the best collections of talent in the entire league, when you look at their tight ends, look at the receivers, and look at the running backs, they just need to find a way to put it all together. And putting it all together starts with their top five fantasy assets. And you can't talk about their fantasy assets without looking at their number one asset, and that's Jerry Judy. A healthy Jerry Judy is as about as productive a wide receiver in fantasy as they come. From weeks number 13 to 18, Judy would average 18.5 fantasy points per contest while seeing seven and a half targets per game. Part of me wanted to leave Russell Wilson completely off this list, but the other part of me put him at number two. Denver's offense was dead last in points scored at 16.9 per game while scoring on just 14.6% of their drives. Sean Payton comes in here to bring stability along with a couple offensive linemen, which should also bring Russell Wilson back up to prominence. At number three, Cortland Sutton. I'm banking on Sean Payton's offense to be able to support two receivers here at the same time. Last season, when Jerry Judy played, Sutton disappeared. Now, Sutton has been looking at a lot of that 2019 Michael Thomas film, so perhaps a bounce back is on its way. I'm still hoping that Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton can be Wilson's locket and Metcalf. This all depends on Wilson getting right and getting on the same page as Sutton. When Wilson targeted Sutton, he was 63rd in accuracy. That's not exactly something that you want to hang your hat on. Opportunities, they were there a season ago for Sutton. When healthy, he saw a 100% route participation that included a 23.5% target shell while ranking 11th in deep targets and 17th in unrealized air yards at 693. Sutton also had a 44% route win rate there and was 10th versus man coverage. Unfortunately, Wilson had those accuracy issues. At number four, Javante Williams. I'm not sold on Williams being ready week number one. But being drafted in the eighth round of fantasy drafts is appealing. And if Williams can return to form by week eight or even sooner, he could be a league winner. And number five, Marvin Mims. Now, Tim Patrick here, he may be the sleeper, but Mims is the most explosive receiver on this Broncos depth chart. As a freshman, Mims was averaging 4.07 yards per route run at Oklahoma. He followed that up the next season with a 17.2 yards per target, which was even more impressive than C.D. Lamb's 2019 mark. It also doesn't hurt when you run a 4.3840 and you have kickman return abilities in the open field. When walking away from your fantasy drafts, who is that one Bronco player that you need to make sure that you have rostered? Right now, it's Jerry Judy. We already talked about the numbers, but here's some more. After Judy returned from a two-game absence, he was able to close out the season with 37 receptions on 45 targets for 523 yards. That's not bad. Over six games in which he had a three-touchdown performance against the Kansas City Chiefs in that 34-28 defeat. It's well documented that Wilson struggled with the deep ball, which made Judy's work underneath even more valuable. His ADOT was 11.8, while earning an open rate that ranked him 11th, according to ESPN Analytics. Also, if Williams does miss an extended period of time, the Broncos could throw more short passes, which would be an extension of their run game, which again would benefit Jerry Judy. As for the biggest bust, I'm going to stick with Cortland Sutton, who's supposed to be that deep threat for Wilson which is great, but Wilson simply hasn't been able to get the deep ball to Sutton. When both Judy and Sutton were on the field together, Sutton's numbers took a hit. Between 2020 and 2022, Sutton averaged 12.6 fantasy points per contest without Jerry Judy. Meanwhile, with Judy, there's a significant dump in which he averages just 6.5 fantasy points per game. That's a difference of wide receiver 30 to wide receiver 93. So where's the best value on this Broncos team? I almost, almost went with Tim Patrick here based on how inconsistent Cortland Sutton has been with Jerry Judy in the lineup. But I'm going to go with my gut here, and that's with Samaj P. Ryan, whose ADP is 107.1. He's going as the RB35. He's going about 15 spots later than Javante Williams. Worst case scenario, you got yourself one heck of a handcuff. Now, I try not to fall into this whole coach speak thing here too much in the offseason, unless, of course, it fits my narrative. But I'm looking at Javante Williams much like I was 
J.K. Dobbins a season ago. Dobbins took a while to get right after tearing multiple ligaments in his knee, and I don't expect Williams to come in and be a fantasy league winner right off the get-go after tearing multiple ligaments of his own. P. Ryan could get some serious touches here in September and into October here, and if the Broncos feel that they're in playoff contention, they may choose to kind of pull back on Javante Williams a little bit because they know they're going to need to get him ready and get him right come December and January. And now that fantasy sleeper for the Denver Broncos, Marvin Mims, who was essentially handpicked by Sean Payton for this offense. If you recall, the Broncos traded up to get Mims, and if there's anything left in Wilson's arm, then Mims is going to be that big play ability and should be able to press the seams out of the slot. Now, I joked during the draft process that if you like Jordan Addison, you'll love Marvin Mims, who is basically Jordan Addison, but faster. That said, if you are drafting rookie wide receivers, you are playing the long game here, and the expectation for that production is not going to be until week number eight or week number nine, and that's where you get that league-winning upside, and that's a guy that Marvin Mims can be. He can be that guy to give you that league-winning upside later on in the drafts. Think Christian Watson last season for the Green Bay Packers. That's exactly the type of... Uh, productivity kind of trajectory that I see Marvin Mims on. And for the Denver Broncos, the only thing slowing them down right now is themselves. If Sean Payton can get this offense right, if he can get Russell Wilson right, this team could be much better than the 9-8 and eight record in which I'm giving them. They could be a 10-win team, an 11-win team, but it's going to come down to Russell Wilson and what he can and can't do in this offense.